Welcome to day 11 in the Whiskey Advent Calendar, where I go uh, mildly nuclear on bourbon. <laughs> no, I just sort of rant a little bit, much in the same way I ranted about the Swedish whiskeys. Um, now, Tom Fisher from bourbonblog.com is uh, the co-founder of the Whiskey School with me, and he obviously loves bourbon. He really should be hosting this video. Unfortunately, he's not here, so you have me. So, um, this is Evan Williams Extra Aged Bourbon. Now, it's Evan Williams Extra Aged. It's, it's the classic Evan Williams you'd recognize on the shelf. Um, the first thing is first. When you have such an amazing rich history as whiskey distilleries tend to have, and you have the ability to make things up <laughs> and tell interesting stories, then you should do that, right? But one thing you shouldn't do is create a part of your story, attach it to historical fact, and then defend it in the face of absolute proof that it's not true. Right? If you're going to make up some great story about your whiskey, just make it up and, and enjoy it and have fun with it. But don't try to tell everybody it's history and then, uh, and then put plaques on your property about it. Evan Williams. Um, this is the Beam family and they make some great whiskeys. Uh, it's Heaven Hill products. Uh, now Heaven Hill Distilleries. So, um, but my problem with Evan Williams is their claim that they were the first commercial distillery and it started in 1783. Uh, that has been pretty le uh, solidly proven wrong by Michael Veach, uh, the bourbon historian. Get his book if you don't have it and you like bourbon. Um, but he, he has a ship's record of Evan Williams coming over on a boat to America in uh, 1790, something like... like six or seven, eight years after they claim he started the first commercial distillery. So that's one problem. So that's absolutely not true. Now, let's just say it wasn't Elvin Williams, but it was someone connected with the family or something like that. Well, here's the thing. There is no record proving anybody has a distillery starting in the 1783 and continuing till now. It's just not a thing. And, uh, and there was no direct connection to anyone with Elvin Williams. Now, were people making bourbon and selling bourbon in 1783? Yes. Who? We don't really know. Who was first? No one really knows. So anybody who claims these were the first, even the people who have spent their life studying the history on this, will uh, refuse to claim who was first. They'll say there's a, these handful of people that could have a legitimate claim to possibly being one of the first, but there's really no way to prove in any direction. Um, however, we know they've been going since the late 1800s, early 1900s, and that's damn fine history. So why can't we talk about that, right? Evan Williams and the Beam family absolutely lay claim to some of the best and most dramatic and interesting whiskey history in America. So they've got plenty of amazing things they can talk about without having to lay a claim to, we were first, because honestly, who gives a crap about who was first? I, I want to know who makes it best. So. This is uh, around seven years old, Evan Williams, extra aged, and it's uh, your classic. Now remember, bourbon just means at least 51% corn. That's it. And the other is going to be uh, some barley, maybe some wheat, maybe some rye, maybe all, depending on what flavor you're going for. Um, if it says straight bourbon and it doesn't have an age on it, that means it's at least four years old. Now the rule on that is you can call a bourbon straight, or any whiskey straight, uh, straight rye, straight bourbon, if it's at least two years old. However, if it's younger than four, you have to put the age statement on it. So if you have a straight bourbon and it was three years old, you have to put Kentucky straight bourbon three years old or Kentucky straight three-year-old bourbon. Nobody really wants to do that. So you almost never find a straight whiskey that isn't at least four. And if it says straight anywhere on the bottle and doesn't have a year uh, under four, then you know you've got at least a four-year-old because that's when they can stop putting the age marker on it. So most straight whiskeys are at least four. Um, although the, yeah, anyway. So let's try some bourbon. Now, right out of the bat, you get the more dramatic wood because it's new oak, and that's a legal requirement for bourbon. And right out of the bat, you get that sort of sweet, clingy, corn nose vibe. Which is why I tend to avoid bourbon. 
Yeah, that's really smooth. Um, that's almost as smooth as yesterday's teeling. Um, as far as bourbon goes, this is a really friendly bourbon. Um, it's not very dramatic. The wood's not very aggressive. Um, it's got no weird tinge sweet notes. This is just a classic Kentucky bourbon. Um, there's a lot of experimentation going on with bourbon these days. Some of it great, some of it meh. Um, but this is just a, this could be held up as like, hey, if you want to know what Kentucky bourbon tastes like, try an Evan Williams. It's a classic example of a fine Kentucky bourbon. Now, I don't prefer bourbon because it's, in my opinion, the, a different kind of sweet. It's like clingy sweet versus fresh sweet. Like, I feel uh, Irish whiskey's pretty sweet. Um, but it's got the smooth butter notes. Uh, bourbon tends to be sweet, but a sort of heavy clinginess to the flavor. And that's just not my thing. So I'm going to be the wrong guy to talk glowingly about most bourbons. And uh, you should roam over to Tom Fisher and watch what he has to say about these things. He'll probably appreciate it more. Um, or follow some of our Whiskey Somalias when they talk about it. They, we have an argument going in our, in our group of graduated Somalias, Team Bourbon and Team Scotch. I definitely fall in the Team Scotch category, but we have some serious Team Bourbon category, uh, which shouldn't be surprising since one of our uh, sommeliers is uh, the younger Phil Pritchard, as in Pritchard's whiskey. So, as you can imagine, he definitely leans bourbon. Um, anyway, till tomorrow, we'll see what we have in store for us. Uh, thanks again. Cheers.